بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس سو ان ٹوڈیز لیکچر وی ول ڈسکس این امپورٹنٹ ایگزامپل آف ون ڈائمینشنل ہارمونک آسولیٹر سو لیٹ می پرزینٹ دس ایگزامپل ٹو یو اینڈ ڈسکس دا ریلیٹڈ آئیڈیاز So our example goes like this. Consider a one dimensional Let me add this to my pen. one dimensional harmonic oscillator of mass m and spring constant k and let us discuss it in terms of classical mechanics denote me adjust my pen denote the displacement the displacement coordinate of the oscillator of the oscillator by x and its linear momentum and its linear momentum by p so phase space is then two dimensional is then two dimensional let us discuss this exam so let me check it consider it one dimensional harmonic oscillator of mass m and spring constant k and what we want we want to discuss it in terms of classical mechanics what we do we denote the displacement coordinate of the oscillator by x 
and its linear momentum by P. So its phase space is then two dimensional. One dimension will pertain to X and one dimension will pertain to P, linear momentum, as you know. So uh, to discuss this, first you need to know what is harmonic oscillator. You might be knowing the definition of the simple harmonic oscillator. Still, I would like to refresh your mem memory. You know, the simple harmonic oscillator is a model oscillator used to describe the behavior of oscillations, specifically oscillations occurring with small amplitudes of motion. The definition is like this. Let me first write the definition so that it is clear to you. Definition of simple harmonic oscillator is it is an oscillator. An oscillator oscillating under the action of a force given by f of x is equal to minus kx. This is the definition. What is k? k is constant. And in the example which we are going to discuss, this k is the separating constant. And x is the displacement of the oscillator from the mean position. So whenever we have such oscillator which oscillates under the action of a force given by minus kx, we say it is a simple harmonic oscillator. So you can see its features of this expression that force acting on this oscillator is proportional to displacement and it is oppositely directed to it. So if x is positive, then force is negative. That means if x is increasing, if oscillator is going to the right, force will act to the left. And if x is negative, force is positive. That means if oscillator goes to the left, force acts towards right. And k is constant. And uh, you notice that at mean position of the oscillator, where displacement from the mean position x is zero, force on the oscillator is zero. And it as it moves towards the extreme positions, the magnitude of the force increases because it is proportional to x. So this force is a restoring force. It has tendency to restore the oscillator to equilibrium position or mean position. That is the position where x is zero. So this is the definition so now in this example, what we want to do, we want to discuss this simple harmonic oscillator, which are we, which is oscillating in one dimension. So <clears throat> its position is given by X and linear momentum along the direction as P. And we want to discuss this oscillator in the light of classical mechanics. So for this oscillator, I can write, the total energy of the oscillator, the energy, which is total energy of the oscillator is given by equal to p square by 2m plus half kx square. First term is the kinetic energy of the oscillator and second term is its potential energy. 
as you all know, this term is kinetic energy. And this term is potential energy. The sum is the total energy. Now, if I draw phase space corresponding to this oscillator, it will be two dimensional. One axis will correspond to the linear momentum and another x. x and this p. So this is the phase space of this simple harmonic oscillator. And any point in this phase space will specify a state of the simple harmonic oscillator, right? Now see, when you choose some point in the phase space of this oscillator, you are choosing some value of x and some value of p, thereby you are choosing some total energy of the oscillator because in this equation, let me name it equation one, this total energy depends on the position and linear momentum of the oscillator. So corresponding to a pair of values of x and p, that is the point in the phase space, there will be a total energy, right? So if it is not known that what is the total energy of the oscillator, that means if we are not having the knowledge of its total energy, then any point in the phase space which we have drawn in two dimensions is accessible to the oscillator, right? Any point in the phase space is accessible if total energy of the oscillator is not known to us because it can have any value of P, any value of X. So any point in the phase space is accessible. So if we construct an ensemble of such oscillators, those ensembles of systems represent will represent or correspond to any point in the phase space, right? Because energy is not known. But if I declare that the total energy of the oscillator E is constant, so if let me write here, if total energy is constant, if E is constant, that means if you specify the energy of the oscillator and you, you know so the simple harmonic oscillator's energy stays constant in time, so if E is constant, then this equation describes an ellipse in phase space that is in the PX plane. So if E is constant, then this oscillator can exist only in the states lying on that ellipse in phase space. Let me draw that ellipse in another color. So there will be an ellipse. I'm roughly drawing it. You understand it is an ellipse. So there will be an ellipse corresponding to energy E. That means on all points of this ellipse, let me write ellipse corresponding to ellipse 
corresponding to energy E. So if it is known that the energy of the oscillator is E and it's constant, then we say that uh, this oscillator can exist only in those states which lie on this ellipse. So we are restricting the states which are allowed for this oscillator. Or if we construct an ensemble of the systems, we are specifying the allowed states or systems which will be contained in the ensemble of systems, those systems which lie on this ellipse, right? Now, there is an issue in quantum mechanics, you cannot specify, let me write it in some other color over here. In quantum mechanics, it is not possible to specify the energy E when uh, uh, let me write it this way. It is not possible to specify the energy to a, to a degree of arbitrary precision. Where degree of arbitrary precision. Why so? That's your task at home. It has connection with uncertainty principle. Think about this. So I'll write here. Think about this. This is your home assignment, homework. So when I take that restriction into consideration that I cannot specify the energy that is, I cannot pinpoint the value of energy. You cannot say it is, for example, 10 Joule, then I'm pinpointing it. And then my specification of the energy has arbitrary precision. This cannot be done. Why so? You will think about it. Why so? It is connected with the uncertainty principle as you will look into this at home. Then what we can do we can say that the energy of the oscillator lies in some small range. So let us suppose now that. So suppose the energy, it's known to us that the energy of the oscillator lies in the small range between E and E plus delta X. So if we specify this way our oscillator, that in other words means if we know the energy of the oscillator lies in the small range between E and E plus delta E, that means then the accessible states will be those states which fall in this energy zone. That in phase space means there will be another ellipse having energy, let me draw the ellipse, 
having energy E plus delta E like this. Is not exact ellipse, but you can understand. I'm roughly drawing the things. I'm trying to be neat. There will be another ellipse corresponding to energy E plus delta E. Right? E plus delta E. And if I say my oscillator has energy lying between E and E plus delta E, that means only this shaded region between these two ellipses is accessible for the oscillator. That means this oscillator can exist only in those states which lie in this shaded region. Or in terms of ensemble, I can say that if I construct an ensemble representing my oscillator, only those systems in the ensemble uh, can exist or, or uh, only those states are accessible to the systems in the ensemble which lie in this shaded region. Outside this shaded region, states are not allowed. So you can see how the information about the system specifies our allowed states, right? Now, another thing in the light of principle of equal a priori probabilities, which we discussed yesterday also, I mean in the last lecture also, that an isolated system in equilibrium is equally likely to be in any of the accessible states. So if I apply that to this oscillator, so if I know that this uh, simple harmonic oscillator has energy in the zone E and E plus delta E, and if I know that this simple harmonic oscillator is in thermal equilibrium in this specified range of energy, then my statistical postulate asserts that it is equally probable or equally likely that the oscillator has values of X and P lying within any one of these cells lying in the shaded zone. I repeat, if I know that my oscillator is in equilibrium, with the energy lying in the zone E plus delta E, then according to averaging postulate, postulate of equal a priori probability, it is equally probable for this oscillator to be in any state or to have any point in the shaded zone, to exist in any state in the shaded zone, right? Because each point in the shaded zone is an accessible state. Right? But there is another way of looking at it. This was through phase space, allowed states lie in the shaded zone between the two ellipses, one ellipse corresponding to E and another ellipse corresponding to E plus delta E. And if it is in equilibrium, then any state in the shaded zone is accessible. That means ensemble of the systems pertaining to this system in question will exist in this shaded zone. Now, another way of looking at it is this way. We know from elementary mechanics that the dependence of X and P for the oscillator is given by, you know, from your earlier classes, x is equal to a cos omega t plus phi and p is a max dot which is minus m 
a omega sin omega t plus phi. Remember a here is the amplitude of the motion that is the maximum displacement of the oscillator from the mean position. Omega, you know it is the angular frequency t is time and phi is phase constant. So p is the m times x dot, x dot is time derivative of x. So we get minus m a omega sine omega t plus phi. These two equations give us the time dependence of the position and momentum of this oscillator. And you know the omega is under root k by m, right? Now see, uh, in these equations, a and phi are constants. So in general, they are arbitrary. That means any values of a and phi will satisfy these equations. That, and in other words, means you can have a collection of simple harmonic oscillators having different amplitude and different phi given by these two expressions for x and p. Now, using my equation one for the total energy, I have named that equation one, I can write. I can put here x and p, time dependent equations for x and p, and solve for my e. So using equation one, I can write e is equal to m omega square by 2 a square sine square omega t plus phi plus half k a square cos square omega t plus phi which is equal to half m omega square t squared. Let me check it half m omega square a square sine square omega t plus phi plus half k a square cos square omega t plus phi then you, uh, you can easily replace in the first term omega square with k by m. Then first term will also become half uh, if you replace omega square by k by m, you will get half k a square sine square omega t plus phi. Then you can factor out half k a square, uh, which is same as uh, uh, half k a square is same as half m omega square a square, right? Because omega square is k by m. You will get this expression for the total energy, half m omega square a square, or you can write it half uh, k a square also, because m omega square is k square, right? Cos square theta plus sine square theta is 1. Now, now, this total energy is equal to constant, you can see. X is oscillating with time, P is oscillating with time, but the total energy is constant in the oscillator. And this relation uh, determines the amplitude A in terms of E, right? That means if you specify the total energy, you say that this oscillator is oscillating with this particular energy, or you specify that this oscillator has energy in the zone E and E plus delta E, then you are specifying its amplitude automatically, right? But phi is still quite arbitrary. Phi is arbitrary because that depends on the initial conditions, that is the initial position and initial velocity. 
and that phi can lie between 0 and 2 pi. Let me write it here. Let's so pen this. This phi can be greater than 0 or less than 2 pi. So the arbitrariness in phi gives rise to many possible sets of x's and p's which correspond to the same energy. I repeat, since phi is orbit arbitrary, when we specify the total energy, phi is arbitrary, it can lie between 0 and 2 pi and it will be decided by the initial conditions how the oscillator starts, where from it oscillate starts and with which speed it starts. Now that gives rise to many possible states. States means values of x and p which correspond to that energy zone which you specify. So it is consistent with this phase space interpretation. When we said that once the it is known that the total energy of the oscillator lies between E and E plus delta E, then all the shaded region between these two ellipses in the phase space is accessible to the oscillator. So the ensemble will constitute to that zone. So through these mathematics equations, same idea is justified that if energy is between E and E plus delta E, still there are many states in which this oscillator can exist pertaining to that energy zone because of the arbitrariness of the phi. I hope it's clear to you. Now I want to make you think about this thing. Let me use here another color. I think I will use blue color. P idea is like this. I take an interval in dx. Closer to main position and away from the main position. Let me first, when I take this interval dx closer to origin, that is away from the extreme position, then only this zone is accessible, which I am shading with blue color. This zone is accessible to the oscillator. That means for this blue dx, only blue region in the shaded zone is accessible to the simple harmonic oscillator. That means it can exist only in these states in this blue shaded zone. Now, if I take same interval in dx, but I take it away from the oscillator, I will use here, I think, black color, or I will use this purple, pink, sorry. So, now I take same dx interval, same dx interval, But difference is, I am taking it into my pen. Okay. Let me. Let me adjust my pen. Okay, I got it. So then this is 
द जोन विच इज एक्सेबल कंपेयर दीज टू सिचुएशन एंड थिंक अबाउट इट सो वट इज द कंपेरिजन कंपेरिजन इज आई एम टेकिंग द रीजन ऑफ एक्स दैट इज डी एक्स सेम रीजन ऑफ एक्स क्लोजर टू ऑरिजिन दैट इज मेन क्वेश्चन एंड एवे फ्रॉम द ऑरिजिन एवे फ्रॉम द ऑरिजिन मीन्स क्लोजर टू एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन दैट इज एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन मीन्स वेन एक्स इज ए सो फॉर द बिलू वन x is close to zero for the pink one dx x is close to a where a is the amplitude of motion but you see the in the case of below one that is the region which is closer to origin or away from the extreme position you see small region is accessible that means small number of states are accessible for the oscillator but when i take the same dx interval away from the mean position that is closer to the extreme position x is approximately equal to a large area is accessible that means large number of states are accessible for the oscillator this is easy to justify why so you know it is more probable that an oscillator in the ensemble if you consider the ensemble of systems pertaining to this oscillator it is more probable that an oscillator in the ensemble is found within its position x close to a than close to zero because why this area is larger when x is close to a and area is smaller when it is close to mean position x equal, uh, approximately equal to zero why so because you know from the fact that near the extreme positions of the simple harmonic oscillator that is when x is close to a the oscillator has small velocity hence it spends a larger time there than when it is near equilibrium position near equilibrium position it is moving rapidly remember at mean position oscillator has maximum speed and at extreme positions it is momentarily at rest so because of this reason that near extreme positions it is moving slowly it spends more time there and closer to the mean position it's moving rapidly it spends right it spends less time there right because closer to equilibrium position its velocity is large it spends less time so it is more probable for the oscillator in the ensemble to be uh, away from origin than closer to origin i think it is clear to you so this was an important example which we discussed i will give you now some homework let me write the question question goes like this what is what is the probability probability of showing probability of showing a total of 6 points or less 
a total of six points. or less with the dice this is your homework what is the probability of throwing a total of six points or less with three dice and second homework which I gave you during the lecture that is in and I told you that in quantum mechanics it is not possible to specify the energy e to a degree of arbitrary precision you have to think about this also so I summarize what we did we discuss the classical mechanics analysis of a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator and what we uh, got we got first the idea that what are the accessible states if energy lies between e and e plus delta e uh, using the phase space idea then we discuss the same thing through equations elementary mathematics right and we talked about the principle of equal epitoric probability also so this is all for today Go through all the lectures, make notes out of it that will be helpful for you. Don't miss a lecture and don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel. If you have any queries, you can comment in the comment box. I will try to answer your questions. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.